Daf Yomi, Tractate Bava Metzia, page 36b, top of the page, with the words Aldas Ishto Uvanov Humavkid. Um, just from the previous, uh, that Amud, uh, that Rava said, no proof can be cited, as it is clear that in the case of anyone who deposits an item with another, now we're on top of 36b, it is with the awareness that at times the Bailey's wife and his children will safeguard the item <coughs> that he deposits he deposits it as the Bailey cannot be with the deposit at all times. The sages of Narada say the language of the Mishnah is also precise as it teaches or if he convey the coins to his minor son or daughter for safeguarding he is liable to pay, but if he convey them to his adult son and daughter, he is exempt. By inference, one can conclude that the, that with regard to others, it is no different if they are adults, and it is no different if they are minors. Either way, the bailey is liable to pay, as if they were if there were a difference, let the Tana teach if he conveyed <coughs> the coins to minors. Without qualification, the Gemara concludes, since the Tana specifically addressed the case of one's minor children, learn from the wording of the Mishnah that the difference between minors and adults exists only with regard to one's children. Rava says the halacha is a bailey who conveyed a deposit to another bailey is liable to pay. It is not necessary to say that this is the halakha if he was a paid bailey who conveyed the deposit to an unpaid bailey, as in that case the first bailey diminished the level of his safeguarding, as an unpaid bailey is exempt from paying in instances where a paid bailey is obligated to do so. <clears throat> but even if it was initially an unpaid bailey who conveyed the deposit for safeguarding to a paid bailey, the first bailey is liable to pay. What is the reason that he is liable in that case? He is liable as the owner of the deposit can say to him, you are trustworthy to me when you take an oath that the item was stolen or lost. That person is not trustworthy to me when he takes an oath. It was stated that there is an amoraic dispute in the case of one who is negligent in safeguarding an animal and went into a marsh where it was susceptible to thieves and predatory animals. But it died in its typical manner despite this negligence meaning it was neither stolen nor devoured. Abayah says, in the name of Rabba, the bailey is liable to pay. Rava says, in the name of Rabba, the bailey is exempt from doing so. The Gemara elaborates, Abayah said, in the name of Rabba, he is liable to pay, and any judge who does not rule in accordance with this halach is not a judge. It is not necessary to say that the bailey is liable in this case, according to the one who says, in a case where the incident was initially through negligence and ultimately by accident, one is liable to pay. According to this opinion, it is obvious that the bailey is liable to pay, but even according to the one who says, if the incident was initially through negligence and ultimately by accident, one is exempt, here the bailey is still liable to pay. What is the reason that he is liable? It is because we say the air of the marsh killed the animal. The negligence led to, to the death of the animal, and it was not due to circumstances beyond his control. Rava says, in the name of Rava, he is exempt, and any judge who does not rule in accordance with this halacha is not a judge. It is not necessary to say that the bailey is exempt in this case, according to the one who says, in a case where the incident was initially through negligence and ultimately by accident, <coughs> which is called Tehilasu Bepshia Vesofo Bonus. 
<clears throat> one is exempt from payment. According to this opinion, it is obvious that the bailey is exempt, but even according to the one who says, in a case where the incident was initially through negligence and ultimately by accident, one is liable to pay. <clears throat> Here, the bailey is still exempt from payment. What is the reason that he is exempt? It is because we say, with regard to the angel of death, who causes death by natural causes, what difference to me if the animal is here, and what difference is there to me if the, if it, the animal is there? The cause of the animal's death was natural, and there there is no relevance given to the location of the death. Basically, what we're saying is, excuse me, basically what we're saying this Gemara is that when, is a, when someone's time, including a cow or anything, when it's their time, it's their time. And, and the angel of death can take anybody, anywhere, at any time. It doesn't make a difference if the conditions are bad and, and more susceptible to death. And, and actually, you know, the contrary, you know, sometimes people have gone through very death, you know, um, oriented situations, death causing situations and, and, and didn't die. So it really, that's what they're saying here. Consequently, the bill is exempt. Okay, Gamora notes, and a buyer co- concedes. Um, the buyer concedes that if the animal returned from the marsh to its owner's house and died there, that the bill is exempt. What is the reason that he is exempt? He's exempt due to the fact that the animal returned, and since it was able to return, there's no justification to say that the, the air of the marsh killed it. And Rava concedes that any time the animal was stolen, from the marsh and then dies in a typical manner in the house of the thief that the bailey is liable to pay. What is the reason that he's liable to pay? He's liable because even the angel of death spared the life of an animal. Even if the angel of death spared the life of the animal, it would be standing in the house of the thief due to the negligence of the bailey. Okay, Rob Bias it's Rob, according to you, who said uh, with regard to the angel of death, what difference is it there to me? If the animal was here, and what difference is it to me if the animal was there? Malachamavis, Malihachamali Hassam. Okay. If the death would have happened regardless of the location of the animal, it makes a difference whether it was in the possession of the first renter or in the possession of the one that he lent it to. Rava said to Abai, according to you, that you teach that a bailey who conveyed a deposit to another bailey is liable to pay because the owner can claim it is not my desire that my deposit be in the possession of another bailey. There is room to raise that objection, but according to me, as I say, that a bailey who conveyed a deposit to another bailey is liable to pay because the owner can claim you are trustworthy to me when you make an oath that the item was stolen or lost. That person is not trustworthy to me when he takes an oath. There is no room to raise that objection at all. Brahma Brahma raises an objection to the opinion of, of a buyer with uh, from our mission, 93b. If one brought the animal to the edge of a cliff and it fell, that is not considered an accident and he's liable to pay. One may infer that he brought it to the edge of the cliff and it died in its typical manner that is considered an accident and he's exempt. But why let the author of the animal say to the bailey if the air of the mountain, if it was the air of the mountain that killed it, or if the exhaustion from climbing the mountain could the more rejects this. But what are we dealing here? It is the case where the bailey took the animal into a bountiful and high quality pasture. Since shepherds typically herd the flocks there, taking the animal there is not negligent. Or asked if so, then the bailey could should be exempt. Even if the animal fell, the Gomorrah answers, he is liable to pay because he should have subdued the animal to prevent him from falling, and he did not subdue it. Gomorrah asks, if so, say the first clause of the mission, if the animal climbed up, 
climbed to the top of a hill and fell, it is a clear is a circumstance beyond his control, and he's exempt. Shouldn't he be liable since he was required to subdue it and prevent it from falling? The more answers, no, it is not necessary. But the Tana to say that the bail is exempt only in a case where the animal overpowered him and ascended, and the animal overpowered him and ascended. Although he he attempted to prevent the animal from falling, it overpowered the bailey and fell. Rabbi Yossi, the mission teaches that Rabbi Yossi said, how far, I'm Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi said, how far does another party, how far, how does the other party do business with and profit from another's cow? Rabbi Yehuda says that Shmuel says the halacha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yehuda said to Rabbi Yehuda, you told us in the name of Shmuel that Rabbi Yossi was in disagreement with the first Tana.